Hello everyone, Peter Zellum's Greeny Flix Adventure 8 and welcome to another video. Today I'm copying 35mm slide, both the paper mount variety, Kodak Kodachrome 64, as well as the plastic mount variety, which will create some challenges and I'll be needing some equipment as well, so let's have a close look at what we need. Today's video is being filmed with the Nikon Z6, the Megadap autofocus adapter and a Leica 35mm f1.4 lens uh, set at 1.4. Okay, so the equipment that I'll be using to photograph these slides. I've got the Nikon D850. This is the equipment that I'm using. Um, however, obviously, the, you, if you're in the Nikon range, then some of this uh, equipment can be compatible with other Nikon DSLR cameras, as well as other mirrorless, you know, the Z-mount type uh, cameras as well. Um, you just need to have the appropriate lenses and adapters to suit. But anyway, so for, for this video, I'm using the Nikon D850. I've got a couple of lenses, automatic focus micro 60mm f2.8 GED lens, so that's an autofocus micro lens, and a manual micro 55mm f2.8. Now from past experience, uh, there's a couple other things you need. I've got some slide holders, two systems that are available from Nikon, and that's the Nikon ES2 system. You get a slide holder as well as you get the negative holder. But I'm not doing negatives today. I'm just doing transparencies, slides. The slide holder is good for paper mounts. So they fit in easily like that. However, they are no good for plastic mounts. What I thought was a thinner plastic mount, but they will not fit into this holder. And, okay, so I have some older plastic mounts also, but these are actually as thin as the paper mounts. So they are fine, they fit. So if you've got thicker plastic mount slides, it will not fit in this slide holder for the ES2 system, just letting you know that. Now, I have a solution for that, and that is the older ES1 kit from Nikon as well. And the advantage of that system is that it does actually take the old plastic mounts, the larger plastic mounts as well. And the reason being is that you can see here, it just, you just slide in the plastic mount there, like this one here. Then it doesn't matter, I mean, look at how thick it is. You can have a really thick slide and it will still fit in the ES1. Now, the other challenge that you have uh, when um, working with these slide mounts is that you need to, uh, and this, is come, this is again part of the system, you have to attach the slide holder onto the lens. The ES2 system is actually designed to work with a 60mm f2.8 and there's a number of attachments in here. Um, which I will use to actually attach this and get the right focus, etc. There's a bit of a adjustment here. You can adjust the position of the slide on the lens relative to the camera. And I'll spend a bit of time to actually just set all that up. And once I've got it all set up, then I can start to actually photograph the slides. The other thing I'll be needing is a light source. Now, what I have is a couple of these LED, well, I have one LED light source with a couple of little barn doors here. And hoo-wee! Um, I can adjust the intensity of this. There is a diffuser on these um, copying devices. 
and um, but obviously you can put a diffuser on these things as well. I'll muck about with the light intensity. I'll be doing all these shots hand-held. Um, so as long as I'm just about right, I'll probably use auto ISO on this once I've got the aperture and the shutter speed about right. And because everything is mounted to the lens, I won't have any problems with camera shake, I don't think. It just matter getting the focus right. Um, there are two types of uh, ex little extension tubes that fit on the on the lens here. There's a shorter one which I've got on right now, and a longer one. You can use this lens in DX mode, so on a crop sensor, for example, the D850, uh, D500, which is a crop sensor. Then with this little adjustable knob here, you can then um, slide that to get the right frame. Uh, size that you need and then with the macro lens you can focus manually or use the automatic focus as well I've been I've tried a couple of test slides with automatic focus automatic focus works so well makes it so easy so first slide I've got the slide in the slide hole already just a matter of sliding that one in opening up the barn doors whoo and let's take a photograph and using automatic focus, and we'll take the shot. Quick review. And it's looking pretty good. So that was using the paper mounts um, with the ES2 slide adapter. Now I've got to photograph some of these plastic mounts. One of these plastic mounts. Now, this is that little collar. That's a 62 millimeter to 52 millimeter collar that actually comes with the ES2. So that steps the filter ring down from 62 to 52 millimeters, so that so that the ES2 can fit on there. The ES1 is a 52 millimeter thread, so that actually goes straight onto that same step down collar, so 52 millimeter, and that's good. And then straight away you can use that same autofocus 60 millimeter lens um, and then it's just a matter of putting in the slide and um, taking the shot i did try using the es1 with the manual lens a 55 millimeter f 2.8 and what i found is that i couldn't quite get the focus right I need an extension tube, which I do have. So I need to get the right extension tubes between the lens mount and the camera body just to reposition it so you can actually get in the right focus plane. That's another exercise, another video, which I'll cover off another time. Let's have a look in Lightroom at some of these shots and see what sort of adjustment I need to do to get the full dynamic range of the slide into electronic format as a JPEG file. I am shooting RAW as well as JPEG, so I have both files there to manipulate. Okay, jumping into Lightroom, let's have a look. Um, so what I've done is I've got the JPEG file and I've also got a um, RAW file um, the JPEG file is exactly as I photographed it from the camera without any adjustments and the raw file you can see on the right hand side here I've, I've moved sliders increased detail and shadow increased detail in the highlights uh, changing the whites and the blacks slightly so with this one with the flash it's not making a huge lot of difference um, with my adjustments here, I've picked up the detail here with a white bow tie against the shirt. And moving on to the next couple of shots, there's moi looking very serious with my old motorcycle there, 1957 Honda Dream 305cc. With some adjustment, really trying to pick up some details in the shadows and uh, some detail in the highlights. So you can see straight from the JPEG file. Everything is very contrasty once I've adjusted these. And again, it's, you adjust all these to taste. 
what you think might look good. Another one of my motorbikes, uh, I think it was a Yamaha TT500. And then adjusting again, trying to pull out detail in the shadow and also detail in the highlights. What's so unusual about this shot is that this was my university project, mechanical engineering project, uh, inventing a leaning sidecar in the early days before <laughs> other manufacturers uh, cotton on to the idea and perfected it. Uh, I didn't develop it, anything beyond this uh, stage. Nevertheless, here we go again, uh, using similar approach to adjusting the sliders, pulling out details in the shadows, and uh, pulling out detail in the highlights again, and adjusting the whites and the blacks to even out the photograph. Uh, trying to be artistic here, so this is again the JPEG photograph of the slide. And then exaggerating a little bit here on the clarity. I did a, a, a graduated filter here just to um, bring out some of the exposure in this black area. Most of the time I've been using Kodachrome, Kodak Kodachrome 64 ASA back in those days. These shots are 40 years old. Um, so this is the color that you that the slide is in. It's, uh, the Kodachrome is incredible as far as its durability, uh, keeping its color with age. As long as you store it well away from moisture, you don't get any fungus or anything like that. Um, here again, I've um, changed the sliders slightly here, trying to pull out the details in the shadows and also in the highlights. You can actually see it in the corners here where I've picked up a lot more detail and uh, here also the JPEG file then the raw file which I've uh, again used those sliders maybe I've used a bit too much here start to get some of the purples it's artistic perspective what I think might be okay there you go yours truly 40 years ago eh? and then um, here I've mucked about with making it a black and white from the raw file even back in those days managed to get the focus so this was uh, a selfie before selfies became really popular. There you go. Trendsetter, obviously. Not so exciting when you're doing it by yourself. I think today's selfies, people got used to the idea that you have to smile. Wow, it's always an epic journey to uh, do slide copying, but it's great when you finish. <laughs> a little bit of setup to do and um, making sure you got all the right equipment. What I did find was that I did take it off auto ISO and I did use everything in manual. So I had the uh, white balance on 5000 degrees Kelvin, which is equivalent to about flash, I think it is, which is about the same as the white light that's produced from these LEDs or the light box that I've got here. The ISO set at 100 eventually, and then and the aperture at minimum focus on the 60 millimeter f2.8 does actually change the aperture to 4.5 so you are shooting at f4.5 even though the lens says 2.8 it's enough depth of field to cover the slide and the slight concave or convex side depending which side you're looking at of the slide in the paper mount or on the plastic mount and that collar, the 62 to 52 millimeter step down, works well with the ES1 slide holder when you're using the, the thicker plastic mount slides that don't fit in the ES2 slide holder. I hope that's been useful for you. And if you are thinking of copying some slides, either your own, um, or if you're younger and you've got parents' slides that you might want to copy that are 30, 40 years old, and then you've got a digitized version of that. It's amazing the stuff that has taken uh, many, many years ago, and you don't realize that at the time it, it's significant either recording the event or it's significant because it's actually a good shot as well. I hope you've enjoyed that, and uh, thumbs up, really appreciate your support. And uh, if it's the first time to the channel and you haven't already subscribed, please do subscribe. Um, likes and subscriptions helps with YouTube algorithms, etc. And that all helps support 
obviously the channel so I can create more content for you guys. Really appreciate your support and we, I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Thank you.